Six years ago, TalkSport released the 14 ugliest stadiums in the world. Four of their top seven were English football stadiums. I really, really like this ground. So I decided to go on a journey and visit those four stadiums. I think it's just lovely in a British way. It's charming, but a little bit gross. To go and find out for myself if these stadiums really were ugly. Is that a fridge? Talksport's fourth ugliest stadium is the John Smiths. Hey, oh, that's the John Smith Stadium, home of Huddersfield Town. The John Smiths is the home of Huddersfield Town and Huddersfield Giants, not big people from Huddersfield, the rugby league club. I tell you what, if you walk a little bit this way, Everton had charged 50 quid for this game. This stadium was built in the 90s. It was way ahead of its time. It became a blueprint for modern stadiums in England. TalkSport described the stadium as having a weird design that does it no favours. Hmm, I think it's quite unfair to suggest that that's not a good thing. I'm really confused by this choice. I'm using Opera One to find out more about the English football stadiums. Opera One is the latest version of the Opera desktop browser. With Opera One, you have access to a free VPN and ad blocker. But my favourite feature is Opera's free browser AI, Aria. Aria is internet connected, so you get the most up-to-date information possible. When was the last time Tottenham Hotspur won a trophy? <laughs> that was a really long time ago. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Cheers, Aria. We do we do have some banter, don't we? I'm gonna say that to her actually. It's like having my own personal friend. Use the link in the description to check out Opera One, a super cool, super smooth desktop browser. Oops, sorry. I just think they got caught by a fisherman. I'm not a fish. <laughs> Number three, the Deva Stadium, Chester. Okay, I'm currently looking at the third ugliest stadium in English football. D Diva? Deva? 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 No, definitely not that one. I ought to have contacted the club beforehand. I just don't, I wouldn't, want, wouldn't know what to say. Like, I don't want to say, I'm I want to come and see your ground, see if it's actually ugly or not. That's a bit rude. You wouldn't say that to a human, would you? Chester FC, a National League North side. This stadium is located on the England-Wales border. The pitch is entirely in Wales. The car park is in England. I have officially crossed the border from England into Wales. TalkSport described this ground as a pretty standard stadium, except it seems to have been built in a random car park. But it's a pretty horrible thing to do, build, build yourself on a car park, isn't it? I just don't know what you expect. What do you expect from a, a football club at this level? It looks modern on the inside, but they've kept that traditional feel on the outside. I don't believe you can ask for more than that. I mean... That's that don't look cool. Nobody wants a container in the middle of a stand. But I'm, does that make it the third ugliest stadium in English football? If we were in Scandinavia, for example, and this was freshly painted, we would see a quirkiness to this because of the architecture. I really, really like this ground. Is that a fridge? collection of fridges. Yeah. TalkSport's second ugliest English stadium is Boundary Park. 
Oldham. Okay. If you did live in one of those houses, Mum, would you, would you if, if there was like a residence discount for a season ticket and you could get a season ticket for like 60 quid for the season, would you just do it? No. Boundary Park is the coldest stadium in England. Oldham Athletic are a fifth division club that average just under 7,000 fans. Incredible. I've found a way to look inside. That pitch there, I know I can only see a little bit of it, that's in immaculate condition. I know a stadium's attractiveness is not all about the pitch, but it's a significant part. It's, it's looking really beautiful. Right, if I was someone who wanted to walk like this, I can't. I can't watch children <laughs> like My problem with the stadium isn't that it's ugly. It just needs a little bit of care and pride. There's a standard that you expect from fans and players, isn't there, on match mm. day? And if you expect that standard, then you have to provide that standard in the ways that you can, and that is looking after the stadium. See, I think TalkSport would say that's ugly, but that's what I think looks no, really that's, charming. That's what I, when I said rustic, that's what I meant. Oldham's been sort of in and out of being a bit of a mess the last few years, but it looks like they're in a good place at the moment. And I'm sure they wouldn't trade places with Berry. But just because it's not as bad as your neighbours doesn't mean that you can't be a bit frustrated. If my shepherd's pie was cold, my next door neighbour had mouldy shepherd's pie. The fact they've got mouldy shepherd's pie doesn't change the fact that I've got a cold shepherd's pie. Just because their situation's worse doesn't mean that's not bad. You could just put yours in the microwave though, couldn't you? On match day, mm -hmm. if your team lost, yeah. would you or would you not poo in this? <gasps> I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I think it's really mean of TalkSport to label this ground as the second ugliest in the country. It's traditional, it's charming. No, but it is a little bit ugly, isn't it? And number one, Belundel Park, Grimsby Town. Mm. For all my overseas viewers, Cleethorpes is the Barcelona, I'd say, of England. Nestled away amongst the terraced houses, located in the seaside town of Cleethorpes, Grimsby Town play in the fourth division of English football. They are the most successful team of the three professional clubs in historic Lincolnshire. It's not that difficult, but it's still a great achievement. <laughs> I feel like I've stepped into a 70s football culture museum. I mean, it's not an especially incredible one, but... This is the lowest football stadium in the country, at only two feet above sea level. There's the houses. And then all of a sudden, you turn left, and there is the visitor section. Wow. There, that's people's houses, gardens and a massive floodlight. Grimsby Town has consistently been rated as the worst away day in England. The main stand at this stadium was opened in 1901. There were new rules that were brought in after certain stadium disasters in this country, and rightly so, a lot of stadiums were refurbished, uh, completely changed to fit in with the modern times. And this is a stadium that's almost stood the test of time and a constant reminder of what football culture is all about in this country. So I do really like it. quite new from the inside. That right there is the turnstile entrance to the pontoon stand and just a few steps that way is the entrance to somebody's back garden. As traditional and charming as the terraces are, it would prevent Grimsby from ever being able to expand the stadium. I think they would have to move if they were to ever get promoted and promoted and promoted. The last thing that you would want would be for these terraces to be demolished and the people of the area to be punished as a consequence of improving the stadium. The people always come first in an area. I don't think Grimsby are going to be in the Premier League anytime soon, so it's okay. Not being rude, just a fact. It's 
Phải xài không?